When it comes to building APIs, there are different ways to do it. One popular method is called REST. But gRPC takes a different approach. gRPC is a high-performance open-source framework developed by Google that allows you to build fast and efficient APIs. In this short video, I'll provide an overview of gRPC with simple examples, its primary benefits, as well as the reasons why it has not achieved the same level of popularity as REST APIs. So let's break it down. gRPC is a modern high-performance framework that allows developers to build fast and efficient distributed systems. One of the main advantages of using gRPC over traditional REST APIs is that it is more efficient. REST APIs typically use JSON or XML for data serialization, which can be slow and resource intensive, whereas gRPC uses protocol buffers. Protocol buffers, also known as protobuf, is a language agnostic format developed by Google. Protocol buffers is a way to write down information so that computers can understand it. It is like a special language that computers can use to talk to each other. It's a way for different programs to communicate with each other in a common language, making it easier for them to work together. To better understand gRPC and protocol buffers, let's consider a simplified example of an online store that allows customer to place orders and has two microservices, a user service and an order service, communicating with each other using gRPC and protocol buffers. Now, communication via gRPC does not natively work out of the box with mobile apps and web browsers. So I'll be specifically talking about communication between microservices. First, we need to define the message exchange between the user service and order service using protocol buffers. So we'll create two proto files that defines the message structures, a user.proto for user service and a order.proto for order service. Now, this can be done in one single proto file, but for the sake of modularity, it is recommended to have separate proto files for each service. Next, we generate the gRPC code based on the defined protocol buffers. We can use protocol buffers compiler protoc along with gRPC plugin to generate code for the programming language of your choice. Here is a simplified example of how the generated Go code for order.proto might look like. So in terms of the development workflow, developers write the .proto file, which defines the structure of the messages exchanged between microservices. They specify the message fields, their types, and any required services or RPC methods. Developers then use the protocol buffer compiler or protoc along with the language specific plugins to generate code in their desired programming language. For example, here I have generated a Go code, but it supports many other languages. This generated code includes classes, structs, or objects that represent the messages and services defined in the dot proto file. And finally, using the generated code, developers implement the server-side and client-side components of the microservices. They write the necessary logic to handle incoming requests, process data, and send responses. Now, the serialization and deserialization of data are automatically handled by the gRPC framework. When sending a message from one microservice to another, gRPC takes care of serializing the message into binary format and deserializing it on the receiving end. Developers do not need to write explicit code for serialization and deserialization. The gRPC framework also handles the communication and interaction between microservices. Developers utilize the generated code to establish communication channels between microservices. The server-side microservices exposes the defined RPC methods and the client-side microservices invokes those methods to communicate with each other. Now, it's important to note that in a complete microservices architecture, the client microservice may be implemented in a different programming language or project than the server microservices. In such cases, you would generate the protocol buffer code separately for each programming language or project to enable communication between the client and server microservices. And if the client is a mobile app or any other application that doesn't have direct access to protocol buffer definitions, it would typically use a generated client library specific to the programming language of the client. The client library provides an abstraction layer that encapsulates the gRPC communication details and allows the client application to interact with order service using more familiar language specific objects and methods. The client library takes care of serializing and deserializing the data between the client and the order service using the same protocol buffers format. gRPC uses the binary protocol buffer formats for data serialization, 
which is much more compact and efficient than text-based formats like JSON used by Interest. This results in smaller payload sizes and faster data transmission, leading to improved network efficiency and reduced bandwidth usage. gRPC also leverages the HTTP2 protocol out of the box, which supports multiplexing, request response streaming, and header compression. These features enable concurrent request efficient streaming of data and reduce latency, making gRPC a high-performance communication framework. You may check out my video on HTTP to understand this better. And due to the same reason, gRPC also supports bidirectional streaming, allowing both the client and server to send multiple messages over a single RPC connection, which enables efficient real-time communication such as chat applications or live data streaming, where both parties can continuously send and receive data. And while both REST APIs and gRPC are language agnostic, gRPC provides a more standardized and integrated solution specifically tailored for building microservices. gRPC has its own set of tools and libraries that are designed specifically for working with gRPC services. It offers features such as protocol buffers and code generation, which provide a structured and contract-driven approach to defining APIs. While gRPC offers so many advantages over REST APIs, there are several reasons why engineers and companies continue to use REST extensively. And it's mainly because REST APIs have been around for much longer time than gRPC. So developers are generally more familiar with them. This means that it can be difficult to convince teams to switch to gRPC if they are already comfortable with REST. Gaining proficiency in gRPC requires a certain level of knowledge and experience with concepts such as protocol buffers and remote procedure calls, which can be a significant learning curve for some engineers. One of the other main reasons is gRPC is designed primarily for communication between microservices and do not natively support web browsers. REST APIs, on the other hand, can be easily consumed by web browsers, mobile apps, and other clients. And this flexibility makes REST a popular choice. While there are workarounds to this in gRPC, it can make it more difficult to use gRPC for front-end development. And finally, while there are tools and libraries available for working with gRPC, the ecosystem is not as mature as the REST APIs, which means that it can be more difficult to find resources and support for working with gRPC. Overall, while gRPC offers many benefits over REST APIs, there are still several challenges that may prevent it from being as widely used in certain contexts. Nevertheless, if you are exploring options for designing a robust backend services communication architecture, I strongly encourage you to give a serious consideration to gRPC. Its unique capabilities can greatly enhance your system performance and scalability.